right. All right. Anyway, Chris, welcome back. Welcome back to Face. How are you, partner? It's been a while. Huh? Our three, four month uh, period in the rotation. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Can you hear me? Good. Yeah, I got you now, Chris. Awesome. All right. So, God, you know, a lot of time has passed. Uh, so, uh, you know, you just take it away and tell us what's on your radar. I know you and uh, your associates, you know, are active in crypto, but uh, I would rather kind of stick to some of the legacy markets that people are ignoring. Okay, there's a Dixie. Great start because it really wasn't much of a rally um, and we've given up a lot, but you think we're coming into a wave too low here. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes to the dollar, ultimately what we're looking to get above is uh, this point up here, this 94.741. Yeah. Um, that gives us our wave four of that larger degree there on that uh, decline from uh, the March 2020 low or uh, high. Uh, yeah. When the markets had that old um, that that whole drop <laughs> that went on there, and everybody kind of ran to the dollar, and yeah. so um, you know, really until we get above that point, I mean, you know, price is still kind of vulnerable to to making a new lower low. But I, I think it's really uh, making a good case right now uh, that we've got this leading diagonal kind of going on here, uh, and then we're pulling back here trying to find this bottom for this wave too. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if that's correct, then wave three is going to take us well above that. And I think, you know, at that point, everybody starts really kind of recognizing that, uh, you know, that the dollar's probably bottom there. And, you know, what kind of effects does that have on the rest of the markets? Yeah, well, uh, we know what kind of effect it will have on the rest <laughs> of the markets, right? It'll be a pretty deflationary, take a lot of the air out of the bubbles that we have going on here, Chris. So um, do you favor any um, what would be your preferred short in the currency complex? Because uh, uh, Euro pound has been, you know, kind of bottomed a few weeks ago. We had a little pullback this week, but uh, would cable or Euro, or would it be some of the commodity currencies that would be your preferred short, or you just don't want to have to differentiate and you just go with the dollar? Man, you know, I'll tell you what, um, I, I think, uh, especially, especially if we get this, um, uh, this reversal uh, coming in here and this move back up. I, I think really, you know, any of these um, major currencies here that kind of uh, make up this DXY, I think really just kind of um, are, are the way to go. Uh, you know, so, you know, you short the Euro, um, you know, short the cable, uh, long the dollar. So I guess, you know, you short the, um, uh, the yen. Aussie. Yeah, the so short, the Aussie, exactly. You know, they'll all just kind of, I think they're all just going to kind of fit in there. If, if we take a look at each of those charts, they all kind of mimic more right. or less um, what's going on here. Uh, because if we look at the, uh, the Euro, let me see here. Yeah. It's like the inverse. Yeah, exactly. And um, so if we sit there and look at this, let me kind of pull out here a minute. Um, you've got, again, you know, you've got this same kind of um, idea coming down here and, and moving up and, and breaking back down. But, you know, again, it, it's, it's nothing really different there. Um, if we look here at the, uh, the cable, uh, let me see here. Yeah, it's up, up, yeah, up on top. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, the cable, cables. of course, you know, coming breaking down here. Um, right. And, and yeah. it looks like, you know, it's got its kind of thing done here. But again, you know, you've got this, this whole kind of leading diagonal coming down here through the bottom. And we were pretty, you know, we were fortunate. We caught this actually um, way up in this, in this wick up here. Um, mm -hmm. On this reversal nice. here, for the, I guess if we pop out here to the daily, see a little bit better. But you know, you know that was too long ago. You're, you what? You know, you're only good as your as your last trade. <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Uh, exactly. Yeah, I know. I know. I made a million dollars off your work a few years ago, but you know, you've been pretty cold the last <laughs> week or so. Send me my money back. <laughs> right, huh? right. And, you know, uh, again, you know, I, I look at the, the markets a bit differently than a lot of other people do. Um, you know, yeah. generally people tend to look for uh, reasons in terms of, uh, of um, news events and whatnot that are going on to kind of, you know, run, run their narrative of why price is moving like it is. And, you know, I come from that other side where we kind of look at the, the market as, as being this um, reflection of the socioeconomic um, events that are going on, you know, how does, how do people feel, you know, because that, that tends to show itself up in the markets, you know, if, if people are, um, 
you know, euphoric and excitable and whatnot, you know, the market itself pushes its way up there. Yeah, uh, I pay it, attention it, it, to when, hemlines. Chris. I'm sorry? I pay attention to hemlines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, um, you know, even before I started trading, I used to pay attention to hemlines. Yeah, you know, know what I mean? What a great first... indicator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm a little bit of a silly mood, but anyway, um, well, go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we kind of, uh, we often find ourselves uh, because we look at things in that way. And then, you know, you, when you're using Elliott Wave, you know, the idea is that it, uh, you know, that the market does move in a, in a, um, in understandable patterns because human beings act in, you know, specific ways. Uh, you know, and, and so when you're looking at the charts here, it, it's just this, you know, just this aggregate representation, um, you know, between fear and greed and the way it all moves. And so, you know, by doing that, I, it kind of enables us to kind of look a little bit further. And, and instead of having to try and find those those narratives based on whatever the news is today or tomorrow, uh, we can kind of say, OK, well, it's going to do this. And then it follows through. And then, you know, well, when it does. <laughs> yeah. But so, uh, uh, yeah, so Chris, from that uh, high that we had in the dollar, ninety three fifty, what forty, whatever it was, mm -hmm. to during this decline, and um, you know I've been watching the correlation for a while. Uh, stock indexes uh, benefited from uh, the dollar declining, really melted up, going in uh, with the it gave us the last leg up. Um, that we've had in stock indexes. So, uh, NASDAQ has been way underperforming. Russell, way underperforming NASDAQ. Um, S&Ps, uh, you know, we had a little crack, about 70 handles from last week's high, and we rallied back. What do you think, a failing rally in here? Or do you have some numbers in S&Ps that um, will produce a new high? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I think we've probably got something coming in here. Um, let me pull up the chart here real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got to find it here real quick. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thought we I had time. it set up here. <laughs> All right, let's pull this up. So, um, you know, again, it, we've, we've been talking uh, since last year about this potential um, top coming in. And, uh, you know, and, and so it hasn't yet. And, you know, prices kind of continued to just kind of edge its way up overall. And so, you know, you just kind of go back in there and, and you just, you know, you get these, um, these internal subdivisions and it just keeps kind of pushing price up there. Right now, I, I think it's making a good case to make this uh, move on up here uh, toward potentially that 49, 29 area. Uh, 42? On, I'm sorry? Oh, 42. 42, 29. Yes, yes. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. Um, you know, based on what we've got already coming out of here, uh, out of the bottom, we've got like a one, two, one, two, and then this um, coming up here. So, you know, I, I do think we're probably going to get that higher high off there. Okay. Um, but yeah, it kind of looks if, that way. Yeah. yeah if, if we zoom out to the daily, you know, RSI is kind of pushing up in there to overbought. Um, Stoke RSI. Well, the last, high, overbought. last high confirmed. That's why I thought we'd get another high. Maybe the RSI does not. Uh, confirmed this time. And if you look at the NASDAQ, Chris, mm -hmm. uh, the RSI structure is so much weaker. Yeah, yeah. Than so, uh, the S&Ps. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I think that's a product of, of what we've got going on here. You know, the NASDAQ being much more tech heavy, uh, yeah. you know, tech for the long time there for the last year here has kind of led everything. Um, and so I'm giving it some room here as a possibility. I mean, it is, it, it is possible to count uh, five up through the, what we've already have here is the swing high. Uh, mm -hmm. that all time high there, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, because of the other ones, I'm kind of giving it some room here as a potential move up, but it's, it's still got to take out that all time high there. But, you know, with, 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 uh, uh, tech, so you have targets all the way up there at 14,000. What is that? 600. Huh? Yeah. 14,608, potentially 14,794. You know, that that's idealized kind of a perfect movement up if it were, if we're to get it off this, Yeah. but you know, again, there is a count you can get out of that does have that five up to this all time high uh, from a few days ago. And, and you know that, and that could hold. And, and if it did, if that did, you know, if we, if we get that little bit further up there with the S and P and with the Dow Jones and whatnot, 
Uh, and then we've got tech not confirm, uh, or I say tech, uh, NASDAQ here not confirming that. Uh, you know, that, that's often an indication that you've got a reversal coming in. Yeah. You know, because you just, your, your, your indexes just aren't kind of pushing up there all together. So, you know, I, I think that your counts that you have on the S and P's might argue that, uh, we're not going to get the turn in the dollar here and we're going to press to some of the lower levels for uh, risk on to be there. Unless you think, um, you know, the dollar's going to rally and the market's going to like it. Uh, you know, I've, that happens sometimes, but it, it, it isn't what has been happening as of late. But, yeah. it, you know, it could. Yeah, you know, th- things mean, are just kind of, everything, you know, is, is at that extreme. You know, everybody thinks everything's going to continue to go up. Um, that, that there's no end in sight. You know, you, you see this um, not, not just with the, the people that you talk to, you know, here trading and whatnot, but you also see it with the, with your major news out, outlets, you know, they, you know, there's no reason to worry. Everything's yeah. fine. It's a great time to buy stocks are looking at, you know, amazing. And, but then you see things like Archegos, you know, that just happened right. here uh, right. before that, you know, Melvin. In Capital an up market was, in a prolific bull market that happened. Yeah. Can exactly. you imagine? Can you imagine when the tide goes out? Uh, and exactly. Exactly. And, 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 you know, that's the whole thing. You know, it's going to hit. I, I believe, you know, I still believe it's going to hit. And when it does, I think it's really just going to just kind of blow people's minds. You know, they're not expecting it. You know, everything is about this whole going higher. Um, you know, I saw this. Uh, this article the other day and the headline basically was talking about how, um, uh, the article itself was talking about how businesses can't seem to get, you know, to hire people here in the U S uh, you know, and, and so they what's can't going find on people. That? You mean, I'm sorry. They can't find people to hire. Well, that, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Nobody's, you know, they, they, they need these positions filled and nobody's um, filling them. And, you know, and you, and you start looking at, okay, well, what's going on with that? Uh, you know, you, you kind of think people would want to work. Right. But you know, with the government and the way that it's, you know, doing working with the uh, unemployment benefits and, and all these other things. And, you know, and some people have family stuff, uh, you know, their kids maybe are affected by wherever they're living and, and whatever the COVID response has been over there. But it, it is kind of telling that, that when you, you know, you've got everybody talking about how great the economy is doing and, you know, and how well it's moving there. And yet you've still got governments pumping all this cash or in one way or another, uh, you know, it ends up in the markets, basically. Uh, it's not really kind of hitting that whole um, moving throughout the economy the way people want it to, to so they can say, hyperinflation, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a yeah. question from, uh, Saze. He wants to know what market cycle are we in Chris late contraction or early expansion or something else? Oh, I think, I think we're pretty much, you know, at the end here, um, of expansion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think, and, and I think, you know, th- this is what I'm looking at here. This is, you know, the Dow here, uh, coming off, you know, again, basically the Great Depression down here. And so with this, you know, we've, we've got this, the Dow continues to push a little bit higher here. And you can see this is the, the three month here, the quarterly. Yeah. Um, and you can see here uh, how the RSI continues to, to print this bearish divergence that pushes on through there. Yeah. But the big, the big story, the one thing I've been talking about is that we're, we're in the very late stages of this um, wave five here of this grand super cycle. And so this basically becomes an 89 year cycle here from the, uh, from the lows off the great depression. And it's all part of the grand super cycle itself, which is basically about 233 years, uh, coming off back around the time that the, you know, that the U S here, um, the constitution, uh, was, uh, was signed and whatnot. And, you know, this 89, this 233, these are these fib numbers, you know, these Fibonacci numbers, which again, you know, coming from Elliott wave, um, they do, tend to give us that um, significance in there. Okay. And we're, are we in the 89th year here? Yeah. Yeah. So we're in the 89th year coming off of uh, 1932 here. Yeah. Okay. So Interesting. You know, it, it argues for a top, um, you know, in the equities market here, you know, probably this year. Uh, so- another guy I've interviewed, and I, I think you're a little familiar with Gann, aren't you, Chris? He with said who? that, uh, what? Who was that? Uh, I um, I think Nick Santiago, and he does some GAN oh, yeah. stuff. And he said that uh, odd number years 
Gan didn't think we're bullish years for the market. So, you know, we're in 2021. So um, he thinks it could end up being a bad year, negative year. Yeah. Is that yeah, true? You know, when... I'm just verifying it. 2021. Yeah, Gant, exactly. And Gant it, didn't it, like the odd numbers. Well, I mean, you know, just in this case, it just happens to be, you know, it is an odd number. Yeah. You know, it does come up with that fib number. So, uh, okay. yeah, you know, it just, it all kind of aligns with that. If, if you're looking at, at that sort of thing. Um, okay. but you know, again, you can see all these, these changes that, that are coming. I mean, if you just look at what's been going on, um, you know, again, I talk about how, what's going on with the markets and whatnot are this representation of, of, um, of this social mood. And, you know, it's you know, not just here in the U S but you can look at it everywhere throughout the world, but especially here in the U S you know, I mean, last year, uh, you know, we had all those, um, riots, you know, you and I had talked about it a few times, uh, those yeah. riots and things that were happening. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they said demonstrations, but people were, you know, uh, tearing into businesses and all that. Um, yeah. you know, there's been this huge thing, this, uh, we, you know, this we were thing. a verdict away from that repeating in Rodney King style. This week. Yeah. Yeah. But just on a, you know, a much, a much larger scale, you know, it, yeah. it's such the, you know, you, you just feel all this uh, pent up aggression and frustration, yeah. you know, coming out through everybody. Uh, and this is happening at the same time here that the markets just kind of just soar up to these ridiculous heights. Um, you know, zombie companies are just huge right now. You know, everybody's putting money in these companies because, Hey, they feel like the fed's gonna, you know, be able to bail them all out. So it doesn't matter. And, um, I don't think there's ever been as many bubbles happening at the same simultaneously. You know, 2000 was dot com, right, Chris? But now right. it's uh, commodities have been going up, mm -hmm. real estate's been going up, the market's been going up, crypto's on a tear. Find mm -hmm. an asset class besides bonds that aren't a bubble. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, you know, I, I think when you step back as somebody who's in the market, NFTs, I think you have to recognize that. Yeah, what's an NFT? I know NFP. NFT, <laughs> people paying millions of dollars for digital <laughs> art. You know, yeah, I mean, maybe yeah, I'll do something on my etch sketch and try and sell it. On <laughs> but, uh, you know, with this going on, Chris, you know, recently gold got back through 1760, which mm -hmm. kind of looked like a pivot. And we've moved up. Um, uh, wondering where your head's at on the metals here as well. The silver holding up better. Yeah, you know, um, honestly, I don't think it's any different. Uh, there's no reason for me to change anything that I haven't already been thinking. You know, I'm still okay. thinking that we're going down there. I, I still think we're, okay. you know, dropping down to around 900 on that. Um, okay. I, I think right now we're just kind of finishing up the the end of this uh, this kind of rally coming off of gold and silver and whatnot. And, and I believe we should have that reversal. And you know, if, if the dollar's doing what we're looking at it, where it's going to kind of come into this bottoming area here. Uh, where we were talking about, I mean, they, there you go. There's your reason, right? You know, the dollar kind of pops up and, and, you know, your gold, and your silver, take that hit and, you know, and then everybody, you know, yells about how great Bitcoin is and how it's going to be the savior of the world. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 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 you don't think that crypto is going to be immune to what you're talking about? I, you know, I've, I've been, I've been working so hard to try and figure out how that could happen. Um you know, if, if you've got a deflationary dollar, you know, uh, what, what you you know, as that continues to deflate, you know, the value of the dollar goes up. And if the value of the dollar, what you're paying for a thing uh, becomes worth more then it takes less of them to buy it. Right. So that necessarily uh, gives you that downward price pressure on things that are denominated in dollars. Um, and so it seems to me that the only way Bitcoin would even be able to to you know, even hold its ground, much less continue to advance with an advancing dollar is basically if there's just that much more demand going into it. But I mean, let's face it, you know, Bitcoin is volatile. It's one of the, you know, the most volatile asset out there, right? It and is. And people don't yeah, tend our to keep dog, money in that stuff. Dog coin, do you think, uh, which was, <laughs> uh, I mean, isn't that symptomatic? It was created as a joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people are uh, people are pouring tons of money into oh, doggy coin. Oh man, yeah, man, Dogecoin it's just crazy. Um you know, you've got everybody here, you know, the the 4 420 there was uh you know, run there as Doge Day. Um yeah. and in one of the worst places I think that anybody can go and get their uh financial advice is from TikTok. 
And yet that's exactly what people are doing. Uh, I actually created an account just to look at how bad it really was there. And it, it's just awful. We had a, a, one of them that was making the rounds was talking about Dogecoin hitting a hundred dollars or not even a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. And then all this Elon Musk is behind it and he's going to put this money in it to make everybody do it. And man, I mean, talk about classic signs yeah. of, of a, you know, of a top of, of, of the euphoria, just reaching ridiculous levels. Um, right. You um, know, and then, of course it didn't. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, one thing that might be cooperating right now, even though the S&Ps aren't, um, it looks like crude WTI put in a lower high this week after the first $10 break off the high and looks like it could be entering a three or a C. Uh, wondering what you're thinking about WTI in here, Chris. Let's see here. I've got that. Because that's, um, you know, I mean, WTI has led bear moves before in the market, mm -hmm. right? So right, right. Because perhaps that's happening again uh, as it topped earlier. It's a lower high there. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And so we I've cleaned out the stops over 62, and now we're back, uh, you know, back there. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm leaning, you know, I continue to lean toward the downside here. I've, I've got a, another count that says, okay, maybe we've still got one more wave up. Um, yeah. So that's this red count here, and that would suggest yeah. maybe that this is a three and this is a four, and we got a five still. But, okay. uh, you know, my uh, primary right now is kind of seeing this is the top up here, this being this um, – five of three or whatever. And so that gives us, you know, this gives us, uh, should give us this further pullback and could even be further along than that. Um, you know, locally, like you said here, you know, you, you, you had this move up and then you had this big drop off and it just continued to kind of move on down here. Um, you know, that looks like we'll basically get this bounce, which is, you know, this is the one hour chart here and we're almost topped out in Stoke RSI and we're below the one hour pivot. So, you know, generally, we're going to look for this to kind of get down here, at least target that S S1, if not the S2. And if you hit the S2, then you're looking at, you know, yeah. continued downside here. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when I'm looking at that, you know, th yeah, that's exactly what I'm seeing um, yeah. is is this oil is having, you know, more trouble than what it has. Yeah. So um, the yeah. So, you know, here you're talking about, um, you know, uh, industrial commodity, you know, copper also, uh, Chris, uh, uh, you know, I thought we'd get one more high out of it, and it looks like we're going to try it. I'd be interested if you have one. Uh, maybe you could wrap it with it if you have a copper count you want to share with us. Uh, I don't think I do. I don't think know, I have okay. it the here. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, anything in grains? I mean, uh, the grains have been like crypto. Um, you know, you've had beans and corn and everything going up or – any commodity market you want to show us uh, that, you know, a lot of people are saying commodities are in the beginning stages of a super cycle. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have anything at the moment here, but what yeah. you're saying, you know, again, that, that just kind of goes with what we were talking about earlier with uh, everything just kind of bubbling up to the top. You know, you had lumber, which yeah, 1900 yeah. highs up. Yeah. Um, you had copper jumping in that, you know, and, uh, you know, so, so when you look at the commodities and then them all doing this big, huge move up here in this last year, along with stocks, along with, you know, just everything, it's, it's this, you know, basically this everything bubble and, and people say, okay, well, if this is going to happen, you know, there's just no way we can get to, uh, you know, get into a deflation. There's no way we're going to get into a, you know, a, a recession or a depression. Janet Yellen won't make it happen, you know, won't allow it to happen as if she's got some kind of control, Um yeah. But, you know, I mean, this, this is the thing. It seems like people, even very smart uh, people who've been, you know, following markets for a long time, you know, you, you see that they've, even they're susceptible to this. To this they drank the Kool-Aid. They, they just can't see it. Yeah. Well, Chris, you want to show your website so people know where to find you? Yeah, you can join me at howtotradetowin.com. Um, there we go. And so... Uh, you know, you can jump on over there. We talk about all this stuff every day. Um, you know, we give you the charts, but you know, mostly it's, it's about, Oh, why is that not coming up there? Oh, there it comes. Uh, it's about the education in it. Uh, yeah. so everything we do, you know, is, is based on that education. And I don't know, it's not coming up here for the moment. Okay. <laughs> My browser's uh, messing with me here, but, okay. um, all but right. Yeah, so you know, trade to win. 
how, how to, to trade, trade to win. Yeah. Okay. Cause there's another guy I think has trade to win, how okay. to trade to win. Doctor. And, and you can also uh, get a hold of Chris on Twitter at Texas TX, at TX West capital capital. And uh, Chris, I want to thank you again for growling uh, your bearish uh, uh, viewpoint. It gives us balance here to know there are two sides to it. And there's Chris's website and um, your services, education, forecasting. Thank you, my trading warrior brother, for taking time out of your day to be with us today and share your counts. Well, I appreciate I, you, man. I, you know, because I know, you know, it takes time. Everyone thinks, well, I'll be, you know, and he would just label something, but you know, I know I put a lot of energy and thought into things that I communicate to uh, the trading community. So thank you for sharing your, your excellent work and thanks for giving me an upside target in S and P that I'm going to short the hell out of. <laughs> thank you, Dale. I appreciate it. All right. All right, everyone. That's uh, Christopher Inks and you can find him at how to trade to win and at Texas TX West Capital on Twitter. All right, buddy. Good hunting. Take care, man. All right. That's a wrap, everyone. We'll see you. We're going to wrap the week up. TGIF tomorrow. Join the guys in 15 minutes for Morning Edge, and we'll have Norm Winsky, Moon Man, with us tomorrow. Okay, so uh, that's a wrap. Remember, don't just count your P&Ls. Count your blessings, and I'll see everyone tomorrow. You're very welcome, Alexander. You're welcome, everyone. Thank you again, Chris. Thank you.